All right, welcome back. Thanks for staying with us on TVC Breakfast. Mm. Moving on now to other issues. The Federal High Court in Lagos has ordered the interim forfeiture of an estate in the highbrow Banana Island belonging to former Petroleum Minister Dezani Alison Madweke. The court also ordered the seizure of $37 million alleged to have been fraudulently siphoned by Alison Madweke. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission says the money was stolen from the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation and kept in three banks in the country. Justice Muslim Hassan, who gave the order, directed one of the banks to appear before it within 14 days to prove the legitimacy of the money. We have joining us now Ahmed Abbas yeah. and to talk more about this. Thank you uh, for joining us. Now, what we just read is just like a tip of uh, the iceberg of mm. what uh, have been the court so far has ordered to be you know, forfeited uh, by Diaziani Alisi Madweke. There is a report that uh, she is believed to have about 23.4 billion naira mm. and uh, $5 million uh, saved across banks in the country. <laughs> what can you say? Insanity. And uh, well, it's, it's, it's insanity because sometimes I ask myself whether those of us who are complaining and uh, the, the nation at large that is complaining, whether are we the one that is insane or the, 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 the looters? You know, some, I, I, I was here some time ago and I said, this nation is just composed of two sets of people, those who are looting the treasury and those who are being looted. We are all victims of, you know, a system. How on earth? will an individual in public office have the capacity to embezzle, embezzle so much fund? We must ask ourselves whether, I, I don't know, I don't know. It, it's yes, as emotional, of, yes. Or as sentimental as yes. we want to be concerning yes. the allegations, because they are allegations, mm -hmm. really. Of course, uh, uh, Dezani uh, Alison Maduke has been saying that she's, she's innocent just, of, just the of all of these accusations that mm -hmm. EFCC is only actually just witch hunting her. But then again, the real question really is the, the, the system that allows for such pilfering of public funds, isn't that where the war against corruption really should start from? Uh, some have criticized this administration's style of hounding, you know, uh, suspected, uh, <laughs> you know, public looters instead of focusing on plugging those holes or loopholes that allow them to, to make away with public funds? <laughs> there are two approaches mm. to this issue. You see, if you wake up in the morning and you discover that your house is flooded with water and the life of your children have been threatened, they are drowning, you, have, you adopt two approaches. One is try to bail the children out of the danger while you also try to find out where is the water coming from. Now, we don't have money for, to budget. I mean, we don't have money for infrastructure. And you are aware that some public officers have stolen the money. Is there anything wrong going after recovering those assets so that you can plow it back into the system for infrastructural development, even as you fine tune the process that allow public officers to loot our public treasury. There's nothing wrong, absolutely. Mm. And for those who say it's just witch hunting, I, I think they are simply playing politics. I'm not a politician. I'm, I'm, not, I, I'm neither a card carrying member of any party, whether APC, I've said it several times, we do not have PDP, we do not have APC. All we have is a club of people who loot the treasury and they look for any available vehicle to use in looting the treasure. All right, so subject. let's use that. So it's not about, it's not about. The subject let's use, in this case yes. is saying that she's being witch hunted. Exactly. That is the point. So does the EFCC have a good case here? Absolutely. Look, the, the, the court is a court of justice. Mm -hmm. And why do we have the court system? It's if the state has a case against you, they bring you before the court. And the court is open for you to come and make your defense. Properties were found in your name. Monies were found in your name. 47.2 billion. Then naira. if you have any case, it is not for you to say you have been witch hunted. It is for you to come before the court to explain how you got those money. You know, I, I've always been, I find it ridiculous and comical that you have public officers who are multi-billionaires. So if you make money legitimately, 
you mm. should be able to articulately, intelligently explain. Mm. Mm. If you find five billion naira in my coffers, in my account today, I should be able to come before the public to say, this is how I make those money. Give you substantiated with evidence and go conduct your, 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 your investigation and come back. But if you can't explain how you came about such humongous amount of money, it will be ridiculous for you to say the, the government is which hunting you. Okay, now, yeah, like, like I said earlier, for this 7.2 billion naira and 487.5 million dollars have been traced to her mm -hmm. in cash and properties. And property. yeah, she's allegedly uh, purchased uh, houses in Lagos, Port Harcourt, Bayelsa, everywhere. Now, uh, they searched her house, one of her houses in Abuja, and this, the EFCC officials that went there said they found boxes of gold, diamonds, silver, and of, diamonds. Mm. So, now, this is just one person. We don't know if she did it or not. Like she said earlier, Alice has been saying that she's innocent. Imagine the number of people that have ruled this country and somehow because she is still in the opposition party. Can we say that is why she's targeted? Are those in the APC innocent of all blames? See, I, I, I won't sit down here before the society to say APC. Like I said, I can't say APC. All politicians in APC, they are clean guys. The APC, as far as I'm concerned, is just a vehicle that politicians have used to achieve their set objective. PDP is another platform that they use. I won't stand here to say APC have all, I mean, all the politicians in APC are clean. All politicians in PDP are thieves. No. My contention is this. When, you are, when there's an allegation that you have stolen, it irritates me when you start pointing that I'm not the only one that have stolen. There are also others who have stolen in the other party. Mm. You should be more interested in clearing your name. Mm. Are you getting my point? Mm. You should. If, look, if I'm alleged to have stolen money, the point of conversation should be, did you do it or not? Or not? It, it's annoying and irritating for a thief to be saying, well, why am I the only one being arrested for robbery? There are mm. other robbers... In this, that's not to say we should not indict our agencies. The law should be no respecter of okay. any person, right. whether in APC or PDP. Nigerians should be beneficiary of this resource. That's my own contention. Mm. All right. So now, it seems the burden is on the FCC because they've bungled many cases in the past that they just they will quickly rush to the courts, and at the end of the day, uh, suspects will be acquitted, discharged, mm. and acquitted. So the burden of evidence is always on the person, the prosecution. So yes, how important is it for the EFCC not to bungle this case this time? Very simple. When you lack certain competencies, there's nothing wrong requesting assistance from organizations and international partners. Mm. Under Ribadu, EFCC was collaborating for capacity building because one of the problem is about capacity. Why do you go to court with 100 charges? Mm. Why don't you conduct your investigation secretly, covertly? Amass your evidence before rushing to court. Stop media trial. Trail people. Investigation gathering can take you one year, two years. Going around the globe, do a watertight investigation. And that seems and to be exactly what the U.S. Department of Justice, DOJ, has done in the case of Dezani and um, uh, uh, Omokore and, and Aluko. Yes. Where uh, they have actually called for the forfeiture of, uh, you know, some of the yes. uh, ill-gotten uh, wealth. wealth. Wealth, yeah. yeah. Buildings and then... And, and the yacht, yacht and of yacht. $80 million. That Jay-Z uh, and Beyonce at one time rented for about $900 million? Yeah. Wow. Mm. Wow. So they, 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 all they need to do is do your homework mm. very well. If you lack certain capacity, extend a hand to those that can do it better and say, so Look, the I question need assistance. Is, just like Aziza just asked, how confident are you that at the end of the day that Nigeria and Nigerians can actually get the kind of closure they want in this case? I, I do not. I won't sit down here and say I, I, I do not have much confidence because we've seen too many cases mm -hmm. so many cases that sometimes at the end of the day you just discover that it fizzles into the thin air other issues crop up and we move on as a people yeah. and because we've actually not been able to get it right in sending criminals to jail 
that's why they will keep doing it mm. until you fine tune that structure. If we have to stop every other thing we are doing, because look, the essence of governance, governance, government has just two hands. One arm is for suppressing evil. If you look at the departments of government, EFCC, they are supposed to be terrors to evildoers. Mm -hmm. You keep criminals at bay. And the other arm is for providing goods and services and welfare for the people. So you need to strengthen those institutions that are supposed to keep the society sane. EFCC, the police, the ICPC. ICPC. Strengthen them. Because until you take away criminals from the society, you simply make criminality a lifestyle. And talking no. about st uh, strengthening the, the institution, mm -hmm. Ibrahim Mago, we know he's still just mm -hmm. uh, in acting capacity as the head of EFCC. One wonders why that is. It is in Nigeria we hear that when you fight corruption, corruption fights back. Do you believe this is... This could be in any, what is playing out in yeah, exactly, way? Absolutely. If you are a student of Nigeria, it is corruption fighting back. Very simple. At least they did it to the bad. They almost assassinated the man. You sent him to policy and strategic school. They went there because the powers that be after Obasanjo left felt that the guy was coming after them. They went after him, demoted him, removed him from EFCC chairman, sent him to policy and strategic school, and also sent in assassins several times. They even went to, to, to the school to arrest him in the middle of a, of a ceremony, of a class. So it simply is a, it's a, it's a it's corruption will fight back, and they are fighting back. And That's I wonder if thing. corruption will win. What about the issue of total and complete declaration of assets as a, a requirement for public office holders or people who seek public office? Are we taking that uh, seriously enough to ensure that anybody who is seeking public office... I'm making the declaration public. 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 Absolutely. Do you even... Let me see. <clears throat> even when they make declaration of their assets, do you have the capacity to investigate... That is why That's I, I said. Question. I get my public. point. Do you have the Do you have the capacity? Mm. If I If I forward, If I feel any form contesting an election, I forward it to Code of Conduct Bureau. Do you have the capacity? If I say, okay, I have properties scattered all over the world. Do you have the capacity to investigate whether it is true or not? Or if there's an allegation, you don't even have the capacity in the first instance. So are you mm. saying then that the war against corruption is only, or is <laughs> in some cases, not even what the paper is written on? Is it only on paper that we're actually fighting corruption? Or we, uh, should we, we go to the very foundation? The very foundation, So that we yes. can actually succeed. The foundation yeah. is faulty. Mm. The criminal justice system is faulty. Even if you are, if you, if you arraign these um, uh, Dizianis and Coos, they have the capacity to employ the services of 10 senior advocates who will help them to bog down the, electoral, I mean the, the criminal justice system. A situation where you try a criminal for over 10, 15, 20, 30 years. A situation where you have endless capacity to bring in motions and motions and motions and application from court of uh, from high court to court of appeal to supreme court you come back you you you, you come back and bring another application that oh the judge that is trying try, uh, that is going to try this matter uh, i think he's going to be biased oh she's he, she's fair in completion i do not think she's going to be and so you key own players endless, in the judicial endless. system have their own share of the blame then uh, see the entire system the it's lawyers an, judges everyone the politicians, they have their own because when you have politicians who do not have ethics, like uh, Mahatma Gandhi says, any nation that has politicians without right. principle, you are in trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, uh, Barack Obama and Bill Clinton will not say because Donald Trump won election and therefore they are cross carpeting to the Republican Party. It's about ideology, ideology, where you stand for. So when you have politicians without principle, you have problem. When you have law enforcement officers that are not competent in doing their work very well, you have a problem. When you have a legal profession, a section of the legal profession who are morally bankrupt and unethical in their practice, you have a problem. And when you also have a judiciary that is morally also bankrupt and corrupt, you have a problem. What about other institutions like the banks? When a public officer steals huge sums of money, they have to lodge it somewhere. Uh, the Dizani, uh, alleged Dizani loot uh, were lodged or discovered in Nigerian banks. So where do you draw the line between the whole you know, whistleblower policy and all of that, which allows banks to uh, reveal uh, some monies in their, um, well, should I say possession now? It's the same. How, how do we get banks, for example, and such institutions to ensure that they actually um, own this war against corruption? And too? some bank officials have even been accused of laundering money for politicians. For, for politicians. The story was alleged, I think, the, uh, concerning this Desiane lodgement in some of the banks, I mm. don't know which of the banks, that she went to Central Bank, 
collected the money and called the MD of one of the banks. To pick the money to directly. To pick the money directly. Mm -hmm. Cash and carry. So, you see, the culture of corruption has affected all our institutions. We, we accept we just want to deceive ourselves. You see, when a man is terminally sick, you must admit that there's a terminal ailment before you can even prefer the solution. It's, all the institutions are terminally sick. Let me just give you a typical, like you are saying, the oh. bank. Saraki, one of the head of the fund transfer department of one of the banks was brought in as a witness on behalf of EFCC because he was alleged to have made some transfer in the course of being a governor, running a foreign account. Mm. The bank came to the court to say the documents with which we mm. ought to have established the fund transfer got burnt in a fire <laughs> incident. I, 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 to, to me, it, it's just constitution, I mean, institutional conspiracy. And that's why the government should go after institutions that are, that are also acting in tandem with this culture of corruption. Why will you, a bank, a bank of global repute, mm. come to the public domain to say documents authenticating international transfer? You can't lay your hands on it. Don't you have a correspondent bank? Mm -hmm. All right, let's look at it this way. That uh, for them, to, uh, sorry, for them to have even come to the public to admit such, it, it, it tells you that there's just a, a conspiracy. It's, it, it, the, the, the political class, they know how to do whatever they want to do, and they know how to cover their, their track. That is what I'm saying. Can we look at it this way, that uh, corruption now seems to be an institution on its own with, key, with powerful players as key administrators of Thank that institution. You. So Thank how do you fight a formidable force like that? Very simple. See, Nigerians have actually been kidnapped by corruption because there's no direction you turn to that you won't meet with the mountain of corruption, anywhere you turn to in this institution. Is it the civil service? You want to get a passport? The, the immigration officer simply tell you the official rate is 10,000 error, but mm. you can't get it mm. until two months time. Day. But they will tell you the unofficial rate. Mm. You pay them the unofficial rate, they will give you a great and get passport. Go to the custom. You want to clear your goods, they make you to pay money. If you refuse to pay, they will ensure your goods enter into demolition. So it's factually well, everywhere. everywhere you talk, so the when? only solution mm -hmm. is that, you see, the government, they are, not, they are not fighting corruption creatively. Because until you mobilize the people, until you give ownership of the fight of corruption, mm -hmm. until you empower the people to say, look, wherever there's corruption, let there be a total standstill. Bring such institution to a total standstill. Which takes mm. me back to the comment you made earlier that when a public officer alleged to have stolen public wealth says, I'm not the only one that's stealing, so why are you arresting me alone? Mm. It, doesn't that in itself show that society has not come to the place where it says to itself, no more corruption? Absolutely. And until that happens... Until that happens. Mm. Let, me just, let me just add this. When last did you go walk into a banking hall and get mint notes paid mm -hmm. to you as a customer? Can't remember. You can't remember. <laughs> it's a long but time. But where do you find your mint notes these days? Parties. Mm, parties. parties and garage. Mm. Motor parks. Yeah. Well. Your money being hogged. How did they get to the parks and the parties? Well, this brings to mind again what a, a big figure in the country said in the past that stealing is not corruption. Thank you for your analysis at this time. Uh, uh, Ahmed Abbas, for thank your you. analysis, you're a legal practitioner. Thank you for coming to the thank studio. You.